Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia the Redhead, mm. here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hello. We are back to talk sister wives. We are in the rewind era. We are yeah. in season five. Uh-huh. And as I understand it, we're actually going to cover two episodes. Yes. But they were shorter. They were both like a half an hour each. We're going to combine them. So we've got some things to talk about today. But before we get into it, we do have to issue you a disclaimer. Please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. Mm -hmm. We have dumb opinions. And we're not going to apologize for it. I'm not. I don't know about you. Absolutely not. And so if you're so full of you... You might want to find yourself another dumpster baby. But if you're down and ready to get into the asses of some Mormons, <laughs> welcome to this dumpster. And if you are down with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We got so much bonus shit up on there. It's insane. It's so good. You got to check it out. So good. If you are watching on YouTube, please Don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because everything you do helps us to grow. And that is what we want to do. We want to get bigger. We want to get fluffier. Mm. We want to get fatter Mm. on YouTube. So thank you in advance. Thank you. Now, do correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard a little birdie in the dumpster say that somebody has called our speak pipe (laughs) again Again. about the sister wives. And now if you want to call us and if you want to pop off for 90 seconds for free and give us your opinion on all of the shows that we're watching and or on how beautiful we are, Mm. all you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash reality tv cringe that's speak my dog slash reality cringe <laughs> we would love to hear from you yeah. so who rang well we have raccoon rachel okay and she's got i think a comment about the sister wives trailer maybe oh god we do have to get into we that we do have to talk about that hey B D, raccoon rachel here from seattle i wanted to call out something robin said in the season 19 trailer she said that she's struggling with losing respect for cody In previous seasons, Cody talks about love and respect. Remember when he said, love doesn't matter to me, respect does. And if you don't respect me, don't bother with the love. This tells me that he's read the Christian self-help book, Love and Respect, by Dr. Emerson Egrix, which details how women mainly need to be adored to be shown love, whereas men need respect. So when Robin says that she's losing respect for him, The subtext there is that she's falling out of love with him, and she used that language very specifically so that the impact would land. What do you guys think? Have you read that book? I have not read that book. I have not even heard of that book. Me neither. But I think that sounds really fascinating, and I like her theory about it. Although, in that particular scene in the trailer, and for those of you who might not know, but I mean, if you're listening to us or watching us, you already know that the season 19 trailer dropped. It was like a two and a half minute trailer. It was litty like a titty. But there's a scene with Robin and Cody filming outside in the snow because she's still not letting production into her McMansion, her hoarder house, and her Dickensian village. Uh Uh-huh. So they're standing outside and Robin is saying that she's losing respect for Cody. Like my feeling about that was that it was very staged. I agree. 100%. I didn't believe a bit of that. Me neither. I felt like she was just saying that for the cameras because she's the last wife left. And it would be like shock value if she ended up leaving. But I don't think she's going to leave. I think she's kind of doing what she has always done, which is pretending to have the same opinion of the other wives Mm. so that she can have the appearance of some kind of allyship. And also, I think she absolutely knows in this moment that everybody hates her, honey, and everybody hates Cody. Everybody hates her sector of the Brown family. And so she's trying to put on the appearance of dissent yeah. And having a different opinion. I do not believe it, though. I think she's orchestrated this the entire time. I think this is fake AF. Now, if it weren't, 
I mean, that would be if great. it were authentic. That would be so. I'd awesome. be like, yes, Robin. Yes, leave the his ass. veils are falling away. Oh my god! And I mean, I could see that as a possibility because to watch him lose all these wives and then go on a tirade where you just look like an absolute fucking monster the last four seasons, and thus make Robin look like a fucking monster as well. Like maybe. There is a world where she could be losing some respect and falling out of love with him because how could you be in love with somebody? So how terrible? could you love Cody Brown? <laughs> like, how? like facts. I mean, so maybe, but I guess we're gonna have to see. I thought that scene though was totally staged. I'm like, mm-hmm. why are we out in the snow? Right. Why can't we go in your fucking house? Right. I don't understand. And it looked to me like this is footage from around the time of the look back tell all or whatever the talk back look back that they did and there was like like we're actually going to go in depth into the season 19 trailer on our patreon we're gonna play it we're gonna talk about it we're gonna we have comments and opinions Mm -hmm. but just like at first blush i'm like this looks like a lot of footage Uh from the last two seasons not just last last season was using footage from the season before like i think we're still using some of that footage and it's crazy to me it's wild and um cody looks as toxic and poisonous and venomous and red pilled and testosterone out as ever Ooh, I don't like him, honey. It is not a good look. I don't prefer that man. And I his do not curls prefer him. are curling, honey. I mean, they are so tight. They, they are, are wrapped. They're pin. Are those I, pin curls? Those curls are they're crazier than your curls. I know. He has the flagrant audacity <laughs> to wear that hair on television. Well, it's because Robin styled it for him. Oh, God. It's. It's so terrible because we're in the rewind right now. So we can kind of see him season five, like 2012, 23. Yeah, it's it's definitely (laughs) flat ironing the hair. He's losing the hair, but it's it's still better than the Shirley Temple. I don't know. I think they're both really bad, but I guess I would probably prefer the flat ironed hair. Yeah. Because it's a little bit more, it's got more volume. Yeah. <laughs> Shirley Temple I would prefer hair. just to rip it out of his I head. I just shave <laughs> it. <laughs> rip oh, it out of his head. My God. I do not like this man. I do not like him At either. all. And I don't know, like when I watched the premiere, I got this like pang of, oh my God, we're going back in. Yeah. Like this pang of, oh, it is so dark. Oh, he is such a vile individual. Like I got rage and I was just like, oh, fuck. I got to brace myself. Yep. You got to take this extra I'm blood pressure medication. I'm going to be screaming into the void. Oh, yeah. On this podcast. I can't wait. September 15th, bitches. <laughs> All right. Let's get into season five. Episode was it six and seven or five, five and, and six. six. Okay. So the first episode is mourning the loss. And a lot of this was about their dog, Drake. And I don't want to talk about it. Honey, I fast forwarded. So I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm triggered. Yep. I, I love my animals. It. I'm sure you love your animals. There's probably a lot of us out there that have had to put down an animal. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. I can't either. So I just fast forwarded it. Yep. But the beginning of the episode was interesting because this is where they're talking about their options for the houses. Yes. And they get into a little bit of the coins. I was annoyed that it was only for like five minutes and the rest of it is about Drake. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Why can't we talk about all all the little options and Mary bitching about what she gets in her house? They don't care about you, Beatrice. They don't don't care that you're watching this. I know. Like you have a problem. You watch this like it is your job. It is your job. (laughs) Like they don't care about you. I know. As a viewer. I know. But yeah, so they're talking about their options. Christine is under budget. She's like 15% under her budget. And Cody makes a comment like, oh, don't let Mary see that because Mary's going to eat that up. And Christine's like, no, she ain't. So that was interesting because I have been wondering, and again, I will just say to you, if this is the first time you're listening to us or watching, like I di- I've never seen these seasons, so never. I didn't know like how they divvied up the money. I know that Janelle has been saying that it's divvied up equally based on the fact that they're all working mm-hmm. at the same job, which is TLC being on yeah. this show. Nobody yeah. else is actually working, but they're taking, I guess, the salary that they're all making and they're dividing it up among four houses. Equally. And by the way, Christine remarks that it makes me feel like Mary is not going to be able to dip into the other wives' pots and take their overage and apply it to her budget. I hope not, but we don't get to see that. We don't get to see those conversations. 
we see that scene with Christine saying, no, she's not taking my extra 15%. And then we flash to Mary, who's over budget on the first page Mm -hmm. of what's going to be in her house because she has to have French doors. She has to have her wet bar. She's got to have all of these things. Mm -hmm. And she's already over budget. Yep. Which is fucking wild to me. And she's like, I'm going to have to get another job. You don't have a job now. <laughs> I, know. I know you. I know you're on a TLC program, but like none of you are actually working at anything. Except Janelle. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. She's, she's the only one working right now. So I just, I didn't like that at all. What did you think about her pitching a fit about having French doors and that she's not going to have sliding doors because she just doesn't like sliding doors? I would just... I would that makes me so mad like how entitled are you like well I have to have French doors bitch if you want them you can put them in later indeed like what are you bitching about if you don't like the three granite options that you have just install something bitch and then get some new granite or some new stone in five years get some new cabinets do it later it makes me think of when you guys moved into this house and it was oh my god so much wood paneling oh my god it was so bad it was barnaby jones (laughs) circa 1973 when i tell you there were five different types of carpet there was orange shag there was industrial berber there was wood paneling there was like haunted chandeliers i mean it was was so terrible but you know what good bones Uh uh-huh good piece of land yep getting it at a great price because it's a family property yep and we will put in the sweat equity and make it shine i mean it's not there yet no yeah there's still popcorn ceiling but there's still there's still (laughs) shit we gotta do but it's so much better it's so much better why are you so worried about it mary but this is this is a byproduct of never really having money yeah and all of a sudden you've got some money to work with and it's all happening under the guise of well mary just has expensive of tastes okay no you don't no sliding doors aren't inherently bad french no. doors aren't inherently special she's basic she's basic af oh for sure i just thought it was so fucking pretentious in the entitlement i'm just like bitch come on but i mean there's one thing to be pretentious because you want to go to capri i get okay and you want to have fucking mimosas okay and then there's another thing to be pretentious because you want a french door i mean (laughs) it's just basic (laughs) af and i don't want the brown granite i want the blue granite. okay and i want my wet bar why people never had i'm not i'm gonna stop right there yeah okay we won't be class i just i'm just like mary shut up seriously just put it in later i was so doesn't matter meanwhile last episode janelle's like having to take things away from her house Mm -hmm. because she doesn't feel like she needs it because mary's gonna take up her budget too probably i think mary probably took christine's extra there's no way christine's going to let her take that 15 percent, and because Christine feels that way. She made sure she added some things in so that she could get her budget to 100 so nobody could take her money. But But maybe maybe in the past, maybe in the past, there has been some kind of precedent where Mary has helped herself to the family funds and didn't quite deserve it based on what she contributed to those funds, which is what is giving Janelle this ancient wound, which is what is triggering her in this moment now. Well, that's what makes me wonder if maybe she is taking from somebody like Janelle who is giving up and then Cody's like, oh, we have this extra money because Janelle gave up all this stuff. My girl Janelle is not giving up any of that money. No way. They've taken her gym away. (laughs) They've taken all of these things from her. She was struggling to feed her kids and now she's got 20,000 left over. She's not putting that towards Mary's bullshit. Janelle's in season 18, not even having a fucking casita. I she know. put all of this money. So I feel like Janelle probably rolled over and just let it happen. Oh, I don't know. Honestly. I, I see her being angry at the That's end of the couch. Opinion. She's sitting at the end of the couch. And anytime Mary talks about her pain, because she's been judged for asking for equal. Like, I just look over to Janelle and her jaw is oh, hard. And she's so like, hard. I'm ready to fight. <laughs> put me in the octagon with this bitch. Maybe. I don't know. Or maybe she's taking that out on some ice cream later or something or cody stick ew i'm sorry nasty probably my bad probably though but then speaking of janelle and her stress eating we get into (laughs) we get 
I don't mean to make that transition, but that's what was in this episode. Yeah. So I'm just reporting the facts. Janelle right. is talking about her fitness journey, mm -hmm. how she's still working out, but she's been sabotaging herself and her trainer. Yeah, she hasn't been working out. She has not been She left out. the trainer who was a terrible person who weighed oh, her totally. on national television and yelled at her and, and said, you're her. the problem. Yeah. You've got the biggest problem. <laughs> And Yikes. she left that gym and yep. she's, uh, she decided she was going to work out at home. Then she didn't. Yep. Kept eating. And now she's concerned about her health. Yeah. And Janelle, my home girl, uh -huh. my Torian sister weighs 271 pounds. I know. Oh, I would uh... never say my weight on um, TV. No. Like she's talking about how she's like, I would never have weighed myself on national TV. And then you're saying your weight again yeah why are you doing that to yourself oh she's based i think that's pretty cool i mean she's just like look this is what it is i have a problem i emotionally eat yeah um i binge eat and i've got to take care of it so now i have a new trainer it's and she's like it's amazing how these trainers are different <laughs> they like yeah. the trainers are so different and that's because she didn't go back to that awful trainer yeah. she's with somebody who listens she can kind of share her psychological triggers he's working with her he's curating a great fitness plan and she's excited again and so yeah. i like that she's sharing her weight i just can't believe it to me she does not look like she's almost 300 pounds oh i know it's crazy but she does have a goal to lose 100 pounds yep. she's like that seems super daunting but i'm gonna do it and i'm like work queen yes i love that for you me too that's great and then the last half of the episode is Cody and Mary going to Utah to take their dog. Why do we have to take their dog, Drake, to Utah to see a veterinarian that they are just meeting for the first time there? Because I thought maybe they knew the veterinarian. I thought maybe this was a family friend or a family connection. But lo and behold, when the veterinarian rolls up in his van, they're like, hi, I'm Cody. Like they're introducing themselves. So the question is, why did we have to go all the way back to utah why did we have to see cody crying as he's digging drake's grave which is so macabre and morose uh -huh. why did we have to do that just for another opportunity to talk about polygamy and utah and how unsafe it was why i don't know i thought this was like super produced and i just didn't like the way that they handled it i think they did it just to bury the dog next to their other dog up in lehigh but i'm like why you're never going back. You're never going back. You you say you're going to stay in Vegas, which you're not, by the way. Yeah, but you don't, I, I, actually. It just, it just seemed performative. It seemed like, very oh, performative. Oh, God, Cody's crying now. Okay. Well, and then Mary being like, I don't want people to think I'm a terrible person because I'm getting rid of my dog for ease. But I'm like, that's kind of what you're doing. I didn't watch it. Is that what she said? Yeah, it's exactly what she said. What do you mean for ease? Why? Because he Well, was... because it started with him like peeing on the carpet or something because old dogs yeah. like they lose their faculties my dog is old oh my god don't she, say that I mean, but she does like she's on medication because she's incontinent because oh she's old god. but i'm not gonna sit there and take her to the vet and just offer because she's peeing on my carpet right so i don't know i just had kind of a weird icky vibe uh if you guys think i'm a piece of shit fine i don't care but, well, like, but it's, I, so it kind of runs counter to who mary shows us to be in later seasons in flagstaff with her dog who's the only um, being who's willing to spend time with her during COVID and otherwise. <laughs> but like she loves this dog. She seems to be an animal lover, which is what I'm saying. Yeah, but... But yeah, I, I, I didn't... Because I didn't watch it, I didn't know that she was putting the dog down due to convenience for herself. It's one thing to put your dog down because they are... Suffering. Suffering. Yeah. You know, like you don't want them to suffer. And Drake did look old and overweight and maybe drake was suffering but if it's for your convenience and that's pretty awful well it just seemed like a weird thing to say like she said that like i don't want people to think i'm doing that for ease and then the veterinarian that they just met that day is like yeah no he's suffering for sure so it's time sad so it's like it's sad all around but like the whole moral of it is just like that they're losing this life that they had in Lehigh. And Cody's like, I didn't get a chance to mourn when we left our house. I'm like, I don't fucking care. Yeah, that's Fuck because you. you guys left in three days time and you took your whole family and you caravaned it down to Las Vegas and you pretended the cops were after you. It was yeah, stupid. You did it to yourself. You did that to yourself. So congratulations. You played yourself. Yeah. And then the next episode entitled Confronting Failures. Oh, God. Christine. Christine and her real estate. 
Yep. She took the real estate exam a few months ago, if you recall, and she failed while Janelle passed. Uh Well, little did we know, but Christine has been studying her little ass off because she wants to take that exam again. Unfortunately, however, in order to study, it's going to take away time from her family and her kids are like, mommy, when are you going to make us a meal? (laughs) Mommy, when can we see you again? And she's like, I got to work. I got to study. Leave me alone. And I thought this was a very clarifying kind of situation because this allows Christine to open up about what's really been happening. And based on what she says, it's been two years since they've been in Las Vegas. And slowly over time, she has lost touch, really, and lost connection with her other sister wives. And what she wanted when she got into this relationship with uh, Cody and the other women was she wanted the sister wives. She wanted help with her children. She wanted somebody to be there for her. She wanted the kinship and the friendship. And here she is trying to get a job, essentially, and there's no other wife around to help with her kids, even though she raised all them babies. Uh Uh-huh. She raised all them babies, but now nobody's there to help her. Cody's not coming by. And the way she describes it, it's like we're failing as a family. And that makes me sad. It makes me sad, too. And she mentioned something kind of weird, like when she ultimately, spoiler, passes the real estate exam later in the episode. She's like, now I can feel like I'm actually contributing to the family. And I'm like... Is somebody making you feel like you're not contributing to the family because you fucking homeschooled all these kids and cooked all their meals for them and you raised not only your kids but also Janelle's kids while she's fucking working and Mary's kids. So I'm like, is somebody in the family telling Christine she's not contributing because she's not working? Yes. Fuck him. I would like you to pay her per hour uh, Uh the, the going rate in 2012, 2013 of a nanny. Seriously. And or a teacher. And you're going to find out that you would be owing that woman woman for all of those kids something in the realm of about $300,000 a year. So she's contributing more Uh than any other person. I know that Janelle worked. She was an accountant or a bookkeeper. Yep. But Christine monetarily, just a monetary basis, was contributing more to that family than anybody else. Totally. And it's a pity that she feels like she hasn't contributed because she's just a stay-at-home mom. I know. Fuck that noise. Like, I got that and I'm like, that's so fucked i mean congrats that you're gonna be a real estate agent that's great like if you want to have a career or whatever but like don't feel like you have to because you've been a mom like that's a job like a very important job a very important job women just can't do anything right no they really fucking can't and so then we have the family going to the cul-de-sac because they're starting construction on their homes and like all the kids are super excited because they're finally going to be around each other again finally going to see their dad again Not really. (laughs) Psych. (laughs) Psych. Not going to happen. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of interesting just to see like the beginning of the cul-de-sac because their dreams are going to be totally shattered. They're going to be shattered. And I thought it was more about showing the kids, see, we are doing this. See, you guys didn't believe we would follow through, but we're following through. I'm just like, "Mm, okay. Yikes. But you ultimately don't. You, You ultimately pull up stakes uproot everything and move to Flagstaff but we got Robin on the couch saying well hopefully this is permanent we've got these four homes we can finally put down roots right Uh uh-huh right saying all the right things wrong yeah but you're gonna be hogging Cody the entire fucking time and not feeling bad about it at all and then we have McKelty Christine and Cody going to visit a fashion designer Wow, I couldn't care less. <laughs> <laughs> what was her name? Somebody Jennifer, Henry? Jennifer Henry. I should have Googled her to see if she's still doing fashion design. She made some sort of a cellophane dress that was really <laughs> preposterous and funny. Yeah. And McKelty was so impressed. And all I want to be is a worldwide or world, world class world class fashion, fashion designer, <laughs> world renowned fashion designer. And I guess. Hilarious. This is a segment that they could produce to pad out this episode. Um, as we know, McKelty goes on to sell LuLaRoe, uh-huh. which is the worst of the worst in yep. terms of fashion. Yeah. Um, but I guess it was cute. Yeah. And then there was like a weird conversation about modesty because yeah. Cody sees a lady in a bra. Oh, yeah. And he hides his eyes or whatever. And What then, a good guy. I mean, so chivalrous. So amazing. And then Robin on the couch is like, yeah, it's like in our Mormon culture. Like the men are not supposed to look at other women. I'm like, huh? 
Okay, except for their wives. Except for getting more wives and fucking yeah, them. <laughs> okay. That's right. That's Whatever. Right. But let's talk about how great Cody is because he's modest. And then we have the live launch of My Sister Wife's Closet. Oh my God. I didn't Girl. think we were going to get that in the episode. So good. That was fantastic. So all of the adults go over to, I don't know, Robin's house. Yeah. Somebody's house. Um, they've got the web designer there. He's got a flash page up, which is the page that you see when you're waiting. You're waiting for the website to launch. You can't wait to see it and order. I think we have like 70 people on the flash page. Uh -huh which is not that much no, for not a national television a show. TV and I'm presuming show. they're blasting this out over their socials. And so that's not a lot. And then they go live uh -huh. and they're watching the numbers climb and climb and climb to like 270 people. But nobody's ordering. Nobody's ordering for quite some time. I think at the end of the day, they got like 28 orders. Yeah. <laughs> And they got a bunch of comments of people being like, this shit's expensive. Mm -hmm. And then this is where Cody and I think Mary defends it on the couch being like, well, we wanted a brand that was unique to us and that was high quality, not cheap. So that's why we have the prices that we have. This is real sterling silver, <laughs> Robin says. Yes. Like that's so special and the designs are so specific oh to the show and they're horrible like i'm not gonna wear a necklace that has four women with diamond like i'm married to one person uh -huh. i mean i like your show and all maybe i'll wear one of your t-shirts or some merch but i'm right. not gonna like buy a 200 hundred dollar necklace signifying four women and a man in a marriage it doesn't make any sense it's like a bad business idea on its face it's so bad or, or the necklace that says sw like what is that <laughs> I'm not a sister wife, though. <laughs> no. Like, did they not get business advice? I don't understand how they came up with the hearts on hearts on hearts, the boobs balls. on boobs and boobs, the balls <laughs> designs of it all. It's terrible. And it's reflected yeah. immediately in the amount of sales. These people have an audience at this time of certainly hundreds of thousands of people, oh, if not yeah. millions of people. For sure. And across their socials, they've got probably hundreds of thousands of people following them. So the fact that on their launch date, they have less than 300 people showing up. And most of them just want to make fun of it. Oh, yeah. Most of them are just like, what are these fuckers doing? <laughs> like, what is this? They're bullshit jewelry. Yeah. It was cringe. It was so cringe. And maybe they thought it was going to be successful purely because they had such a big fan base at mm -hmm. the time for TV. But I'm like, it has to be good. Like, why didn't you start out with t-shirts and mugs and shit? Yeah. I mean, I totally would have bought a mug. Yeah, a sweatshirt. I yep. totally would have bought a sweatshirt. I mean, that would have been fantastic. And then you would have made a lot of money. Yeah. And then you could have expanded to other shit if you wanted to have jewelry or whatever. But to start off with sterling silver jewelry that's clunky and ugly as fuck mm -hmm. is wild. But just wait. The only episode that I remember, and I don't even know if it's in the season. I can't remember if it's in the season or another season, is when they do the Shark Tank episode. Oh, my God. In front of the investors. And they're, like, evaluating My Sister Wife's Closet, at, like, at $10 million. That has to be based on actual sales. Yeah. It can't be, like, speculation or conjecture based on the people that watch your show. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very curious to see, by then, when they're sitting in front of investors, how many web visits they're getting per month. I'm Nothing. very, very curious to see that. But the thing that I want to say was like once you identify oh this shit isn't converting right the way that it needs to like you immediately pull back you reevaluate you change your strategy exactly that might mean you change your actual product maybe the way that you're marketing it and how you're marketing it but like you change your strategy but i'm just putting on my raccoon thinking cap i am a prognosticator and i already know they're not going to change anything because i think this jewelry is tied to robin's ego yes. and as much as all the wives are like oh yeah we really believe in this business venture because we have to pay our mortgages yeah this has really got to work mm -hmm. as much as they're saying that it's really robin's baby and so all of her designs are probably inspired by god uh-huh and her love for the family manifested from god yeah and so she's probably got a fundamental unwillingness to change anything like that totally which means they're gonna fail and i i know they go on to fail oh, i think yeah. there's still a website but like there's no sales it's dead yeah yeah but i love that janelle at every point 
always brings it back to like, yeah, this is like a fraction of the cost of what my gym would have been. So that's why we're going to go with this. But like, you know, the undertone of that is that she's bitter that they're not starting Mm -hmm. the gym. She still says it's a dream of hers, which I'm surprised to this day that she still hasn't opened up a gym. Maybe well, it's she opened up a website so that she could mentor people in fitness. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we saw the copy on that website. I don't yeah. know that she's actually doing that. And then she went and bought like a farm in North Carolina. Like a flower farm. She wants to have a flower farm. Like yeah. her head's kind of all over the place. Yeah. But back to that premiere bitch, when she's sitting down with Christine in the season 19 um, trailer and she's talking about lawyering up. Girl. She's talking straight to my soul. Oh. She's talking straight to my butt honey so i'm like if good. you would only i don't think she has though because if she no. has we would know about it yeah but oh my god please lawyer up oh please sue the god. fuck the wheels please. the dickensian village out of that hoarder house oh my god if all three of them lawyered up oh my god cody and robin would be done for it would be amazing drag them drag them through drag the mud them. Um, but yeah but see janelle just doesn't like stick to shit no she, she doesn't. doesn't stick to her fitness plan yeah. she doesn't fit, stick to her dreams like of opening a gym she just tries to make shit work all the time and at the end of the day like well what have you actually accomplished even with coyote pass i'm not blaming her because she's part of a a, a unit yeah. of people right but at the end of the day with coyote pass you don't even have a structure on that i don't even know if you can actually build on it for real i don't even know if you can actually build on it at this time like what do you have janelle you got to make smarter decisions yep like especially at your age but maybe she is with her flower farm maybe he maybe she's gonna make money i wish that for her Uh, that's great i want that she's making money from plexus and the gut health drinks and whatever did you hear that savannah is gonna go to school in North Carolina oh. or in the in the general area. No, I didn't. So we've got Janelle there. We've got McKelty moving there. Now we've got Savannah moving there. Ooh. So a lot of the family is going to be relocated. And nobody, nobody wants to be around Cody and Robin. I love that for them. Mm-hmm. That's what they get. Yep. That's what you deserve. It's the consequences of your actions. Facts. And then the last part of this episode is everybody getting together at a park because they're waiting Or they're going to have some dinner or something for Christine. She's going to go take her real estate exam. She failed the practice test that she took. So she's really worried she's going to fail this test. So everybody's waiting around to see if she's going to pass. And she shows up and she passes. Mm -hmm. But this opens the conversation about failing as a family. Right. And when Christine says this, Mary immediately tries to defend it. Being like, well, I wouldn't go as far as to say that we're failing. We're a work in progress. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, just invalidating what Christine is saying. And Christine's telling the truth. Yeah. If anyone's going to tell the truth, it's Christine. And again, you can kind of see Cody's face fall when she says that. And I don't think it's because he disagrees necessarily with the sentiment. It's because she's saying it on camera. Yep. She's outing the family and the facade that the family projects to us. Yep. And he doesn't like that because he's always performing. And so Mary comes in, she starts caping, she starts sweeping, she starts doing what she always does. But no, Christine's right. Oh, yeah. How often are you going over there to see Christine, Cody? How often are you seeing your kids with her or with Janelle? Like, what's your schedule like? What's the calendar like? When does Mary even get to see you? Yes. It's just crazy to see how quickly she called it. Like, in season five. In season one, bitch. I mean, yeah, she has been season, calling it. In season, in episode one. I mean, it's crazy that she's just been the one saying it this whole entire time, but yet she stuck around and still tried. It's wild to it me. is it's wild and then we have a preview for next episode and they take some rv trip to nauvoo illinois yeah some sort of polygamist mormon site town. like where polygamy began or something but they've got to rent two rvs to do it so you know it's going to be a brown calamity road trip yep and we see cody brown getting all upset and staying up until three in the morning driving for five days and screaming at mary because why she should drive he's just he's just too much he is so much i don't know how any of these women dealt with him for as long as they did but i'm excited to see that disaster because it's going to be chaotic yes and then we're going to finish out the season and then season 19 premieres wow i can't wait i can't either It's been a good year so far. Yeah, it has. Yeah, I look forward to it. Me too. Well, is there anything else that we want to say to these beautiful raccoons before we go, Beatrice? Well, 
If you love our podcast, I sure hope oh my God. you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review. Ah! It really helps us grow the pod so more people can find us. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. We will be back later this week to talk. Welcome to Plathville and Unexpected. Make sure you come back for that because we love to see you. Yeah. And until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>